One is a 16-bit Super Nintendo JRPG, the other a trilogy of Italian epic poetry. What do Final Fantasy VI and the Divine Comedy have in common? In this Gamelogica documentary, we're exploring a theory that the Divine Comedy provides a frame for interpreting the themes and characters of the sixth Final Fantasy. Consider it a classic in its own right and one of the most influential works in Western literature, the comedy was written by Dante Alighieri, a Florence Italian poet and philosopher. It was completed in 1321, became so popular and widely read, it went on to shape the evolution of its native language. It's a true medieval epic, a trinity of books beginning with the Inferno, then Purgatorio, and finally Paradiso, each organized into cantos such as... The man who lies asleep will never waken fame and his desire and all his life drift past him like a dream, and the traces of his memory fade from time like smoke in air or ripples on a stream. Dante himself takes the lead role in the Divine Comedy, and the story is told in first person. Following his journey from a dark wood into the nine circles of hell, then the mountain of purgatory, and finally up into paradise, celestial heaven. He's aided initially by the guidance of Virgil, a pagan poet of antiquity whom Dante admires. The comedy functions as an allegory, summarizing Dante's beliefs about the journey of the sinner through guilt toward redemption. And it opens like this. In the midway of this mortal life, I found me in a gloomy wood, astray, gone from the path direct and aim to tell. It were no easy task, how savage wild, that forest, how robust and rough its growth, which to remember only my dismay renews in bitterness not far from death. Yet or done. To build his hereafter, Dante borrowed heavily from the theology of Thomas Aquinas and the traditions of the Greeks. Minotaurs and centaurs appear alongside Christian demons and angels, its imagery is both harsh and sublime, transcendent and disgusting and elegant, with Dante taking a decidedly political stance against several of his contemporaries in his writings. Frankly, it possesses an outdated medieval vision of the Christian afterlife, although it has inspired countless works of art, film, music, and even video games, such as Devil May Cry and Resident Evil Revelations. Final Fantasy VI is still widely considered by many fans to be the best in its series for its heavy themes, large cast of colorful characters, cataclysmic story, balanced humor and pathos, masterclass soundtrack, and 2D par excellence. Final Fantasy VI has been compared to an opera, another Italian invention of course. Coincidentally, a sweeping drama in which its roster is swept up, traumatized, thrown down, only to get up and seek meaning in a meaningless world. Well, that's probably not what most operas are about. New fans playing and enjoying it today prove that good art stays good, even as we or society age. It seems a little silly to have to make that statement about a video game that's only 30 years old, alongside a literary work that's over 700, but here we are. A big part of why Final Fantasy VI continues to compel and impress players is its unforgettable villain, Kefka Palazzo. I will destroy everything. I'll create a monument to non-existence. <laughs> Kefka is a force of pure evil, a cruel clown granted omnipotence. It's his final fight against our heroes which first introduced me to pairing the Divine Comedy with Final Fantasy VI, based on observations made elsewhere on the internet. As the party ascends the tower-like structure of the final battle, the player can take note of various design elements with a distinctly religious flavor. We'll save examining Final Fantasy's parody of Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso in the Kefka fight for another video, but it's important to note that this is where our theory began. Kefka represents an attack upon hope in the face of meaninglessness. Why try if the universe is ultimately chaos and indeed hostile towards all life? These are powerful themes which play throughout the game's history. 
Its main cast in facing and defeating Kefka are overcoming a personification of any maniacal or nihilistic reason to give up on life, choosing to find meaning to keep on living instead. While the interpretive frame of the Divine Comedy is clearest in the ultimate encounter against the godlike Kefka, can the Commedia give us any further insight into any other characters? That was the question that I asked myself before I started writing this script. Can a 14th century medieval poem help us better understand the beloved world of Final Fantasy VI? Can we find analogs for VI's interesting, complex, and flawed characters in Dante's trilogy? To answer these questions, we'll examine each playable character in Final Fantasy VI, each character one by one, that's every person who joins the party, yes, including the secret ones. We are excluding anyone who's merely a guest character. Sorry, Bannon, Biggs, and Wedge, see you in a different video on NPCs with General Leo. What's so compelling about Final Fantasy VI is how its diverse cast displays a range of personal strengths and weaknesses, virtues and vices that truly feel all different. Have you ever wondered what the quote-unquote sins of these characters are? We're going down our list of playable party members and deciding, based on their backstories, personalities, and flaws, where Dante might have placed them in his version of Hell. Ambitious? I think so. I know we ought to flee vain ambition for by that sin fell the angels, but I do what I want. Next time, we begin our Dante x Final Fantasy VI crossover.